Today we are going to start a project on the African dancers and even more specifically the kente cloths that they wear and that they create. To start today we are going to paint an orange background and a yellow or a peach or er, horizon line. You are going to need a placemat, a piece of white paper, a pencil, a paintbrush, and at your table you will get one cup of orange and one cup of peach. The first thing I want you to do is write your name on the back nice and big so that I can read it and that you can read it. Then you can go ahead and turn it over and you're going to hold it or place it the landscape way. Now I do not want you to draw a line in the middle with a pencil. You're going to do it with paint. Now I don't care what paint color you start with. Maybe two of you want to start with orange and the other two want to start with peach. But you're going to start by just kind of drawing a line or painting a line down the middle. If it's not perfect, that is okay. And you are going to paint this entire side orange and you will paint the other side with peach. I want you to really take your time so that you cannot see any white paper underneath. Again, make sure that the placemat is underneath so that you don't get too much paint on the table. Once you have painted the orange, you need to wash your brush before you get the peach. The other option would be to switch with someone else at your table who has peach on their brush already and go ahead and paint with their brush so you don't have to wash it. Once you have your new brush, go ahead and start painting the top with peach. And when you get to that center line, you want to go right next to the orange. You could even overlap a little bit. Because again, you don't want to see any white paper underneath. So go ahead and paint both sides of your artwork, orange on one side and peach on the other side and take your time so that you cannot see any white paper underneath. Now when you are done painting, you're going to put your finished artwork on the drying rack so that it has time to dry. The next step is to make the robes with the kente cloth paper that we talked about before. So at your table you are going to get a bin and in the bin are small pieces of kente cloth paper cut up in the perfect size that you need. You are going to need this box, you are going to need a pencil, and you are going to need a black marker. You are going to choose three kente cloths that are all different, that look very different from one another. So I'm going to choose these three, they look very different. And then everyone else at your table will choose three as well. So each get three different cloths. What you're going to do is you're going to flip them over and with a pencil you're going to sketch out your dress designs. So you can see I have one that's flat at the bottom, I have a couple that are diagonal, and you do want to have them take up a lot of this paper. This is about the right size. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw three different robe ideas 
And once you have drawn them out with pencil, then you can go ahead and cut them out. One. When you are done cutting them out, you want to put your scraps in the recycling bin. The next step is to draw different sashes or jewelry and necklaces onto your robes. Now you can do that either with pencil first or you can go right with black marker as that is what we're going to do at the end. So you can again decide whether if you want to do a sash, a decorative sash, and maybe you want a pattern inside that. You really want to take your time on this as this was a really this is a very important part of their culture. And they really thought about their kente class and they took their time making these. So I have a sash there. Maybe I'll do a necklace here or a variety of necklaces with beads. And then here I think I'm going to do a sash one way. And I'm also going to have some beads. So go ahead and draw. Kind of decorate your kente cloth robes for your African dancers. Now once you have your robes finished and you have your papers dry, before you glue on your bodies, we need to create this border. So we're going to do this by using a ruler. And what we're going to do is we are going to put the ruler lined up really nicely at the top. And with pencil, we're going to hold it with one hand and we're going to very lightly draw a pencil line at the top. Then you will do the same at the bottom. Very lightly and gently as we're going to erase a little bit. You will do the same on each side. So I have a border around my entire thing. Now before I go over with black marker, I'm going to erase where it's kind of crossed over, where I don't want any of those pencil lines. Then once you have gone over it with pencil, it looks nice, it looks straight then you can go ahead and trace it with black marker make sure you're drawing very slow when you're going and drawing on the paint take your time going over all the pencil lines to make your border really stand out and look nice and neat Now we're going to come back to the border at the end, but right now we are going to glue our bodies, we are going to draw our heads, we are going to draw our dancing people. So we are going to need a glue bottle, 
pencil and again you're going to use your marker. Now you're going to place your dancers in your artwork. You can space them out as you would like. Open your glue. And when you're gluing, you do not need a lot of glue, second graders. And I'm also not going to go right up to the edge. I'm going to leave space. You know, it's a little difficult to see in the video, but I'm going to make sure I don't go right up to that edge. Is when we press it, we don't want the glue to come out. Then I'm going to hold it for 10 seconds and glue the second one and the third one. Once they are glued, we're going to go ahead and again draw the body. So I'm going to do this with pencil first so that if we make a mistake, we can always erase it. I'm going to start with the heads. Now we are not going to be doing faces. We are just going to be doing the circle of the head. We are going to be doing moving and dancing bodies so you can kind of have fun with how you want your arms to be. As well as your legs. Make sure you have feet and hands as well. You can kind of have fun with this. It does not necessarily have to be realistic. And I may have them holding a staff, different shapes. Now, once you have it drawn out, you have it sketched out with pencil, then you're going to go over with your black marker and you're going to color it in and trace over all of your pencil lines. Again, when you are coloring on paint, it can dry out really quickly so it's important that you go really nice and slow and you color in everything very thoroughly. You could make the arms maybe a little thicker, go over them a few times. Don't forget your hands. Go ahead and trace over all of your pencil lines with black marker. Now the last part to our body is to add the hair. Now when we looked at those pictures, we saw a variety of different hairdos that the dancers were wearing. So you can kind of have fun with this and add some fun hair. You could also just leave one blank 
with hair maybe kind of really shaved and close to their heads. You could also draw, we saw they were wearing some head pieces and some head wraps, so you could also try and draw that as well. But go ahead and draw hair to your dancers. Of course this is meant to look somewhat like a cartoon and obviously not like a realistic person. We'll just have some fun. Once you are done with your dancing bodies, with the kente cloth, with sashes, with designs, their hair, and their heads, we are ready for the final step, which is the border. Now for that, we are going to create patterns around the border using tissue paper that is animal printed. So we are going to be using tiger print, cheetah print, zebra print and giraffe print. So at your table you are going to get little pieces of each of the different prints and you are going to cut out a variety of shapes and glue them on the border. So we already have our border drawn. I think I might do a triangle outline. So I'm going to start by with my zebra print, cutting out a bunch of diamonds and setting them where I want them to go. Then creating a pattern around your entire artwork. You will want to include all of the different prints. And you can see here that I have triangles, I did rectangles, and then after I added my pattern, I have diamonds in the corners, I went and traced and outlined all of my shapes to make them clearer, to make them a little more bold and to stand out, and I even added some extra lines and details as well. So go ahead and create your border using tissue paper, glue stick, and scissors, and your black marker.